we've made some changes around here. Hi, welcome to the All Moments Podcast. This is a podcast about my return. Hi, I'm Max Haddad. To stand-up comedy after six, seven years away. It's just me talking about, oh my God, that's the loudest bone chewing I've ever heard. I love you so much. Back to the intro. Uh, that, uh, what am I doing? I'm coming back to stand-up and I'm telling you about it. And so I went to prison. I had a drug problem. If you want to hear about that, you want to hear about what it's like relearning how to do comedy, please consider subscribing to this podcast. If you went to high school with me, you practically owe me. We got a skeleton. Um, the last episode, I was complaining about being too broke to afford a fake skeleton. I was afraid that I would be mistaken and that someone would think I wanted real bones in my house and I didn't want that. And I was not mistaken. You all heard me perfectly clear. I wanted a fake skeleton. And there's no way to emotionally prepare yourself to go onto your front porch, open an Amazon package, and there'd be a corpse in it. Um, you know, I'm not so stupid, but for a second, these are bones, these are bones, you know. These are bones. I wish I had a better thing that I yelled in the moment, but that's what I yelled. You know when something dramatic happens in your life and you're like, I wonder how I'll respond in that moment. <clears throat> All the times that I was laying in bed at night thinking, if somebody mailed me a corpse, what would I yell? You know, these are normal nighttime things that we think as we're, you know, you count sheep, one, two, three, and the fourth sheep that comes across whispers in your ear, how <laughs> And you're like, uh, uh, what, what would a body be like in a box? You know, normal nighttime feelings and thoughts. Uh, everybody poops. And you go out on your, your porch and I open the box. And what do I hope I scream? I hope I scream something like, oh, we all scream for ice cream is in my head now because I keep saying hope I scream. Uh, something like, my God, who, who did this to you, man? I'm, I'll avenge you. Something like that. Nice, right? <clears throat> And I have that one type of fedora that's cool. You know, like, any you see a fat kid with a katana and a fedora, not cool. You see an old school gum shoe with like a, like a detective's coat on, whatever that means, you know, like a tan trench coat. And he's got the one kind of fedora that only that bone structure can pull off. And I tip that and I do avenge him. I went out there and I opened the box and I yelled to all my neighbors, these are bones. So, I'm a little bit embarrassed. I didn't hit that mark, and it's no wonder Hollywood hasn't said yes to me yet. <clears throat> With acting skills like that, take nothing for granted, Joanna Bexson said. Sorry, Joni. That's what we called each other. I did take acting lessons in New York, believe it or not, when I lived there. From, from Joanna Bexson, who is great. Um, there was some weird, like, grassroots marketing campaign when I was an open micer in New York and uh, everybody was hearing about Joanna Buxton is like, oh, she's, she, I bet audio has been fucked up this whole episode. She's the, she's who taught David Tell and Dave Chappelle. It was weird. It was like whoever came up with comedians to make up the lie had only known, like could only think of Dave and then said a tell and then like what rhymes with the tell Chappelle, you know? That's what it felt like, but we were all so desperate for any, any way to improve anything. Please make my life better. Oh my God. Being an open micer, being an open micer. Yeah. Let me talk about it. Like it's still not halfway happening. Kill, somebody kill me. This is my plea to the internet. My dog just got one of those, uh, big <clears throat> bones. One of those haunches. It's, uh, like a thigh bone of a cow or something it's so big you can tell whatever animal it came from could have been somebody like had a real life this is the haunch of an animal that was going to work had a family for sure could have maybe even done big things cured cancer who knows but it's important that dogs have something to chew on uh and i'm it's weird this is dumb that i care but I overthink everything. That's that's my truth. And uh, my dog eats meat, and I don't. I eat fish. This is my dating 
video. Um, <laughs> you remember, does anybody remember in the 90s and probably before, there would be the VHS and there would be the people and they'd all be wearing Hawaiian shirts for some reason. They'd be like, hi, I'm Brian. I like clams. Uh, and then apparently I've got seafood on the brain today. And then he'd be like, if you want to go bowling with me, you know, call 1-800 and you could get a date this way. Then we moved away from that. We're like, that's, can you believe we ever did that? And now we're just doing that again, but in like rapid fire. It would be like having a thousand VHS tapes and you would put it in and you would watch three seconds. Hi, I'm Brian. Nope. And you pull the VHS out and put another one in. Hi, I'm still, nope. And you don't need to pull another. So uh, this is the, hey. Oh. This is the Halloween episode. Welcome to How Scary That Probably Is For You. <laughs> we, did I do the skeleton thing already? Can't remember. We got a witch. I really... Oh my God. See, I'm looking. I've got... So I've got a monitor down here now. You guys don't care. I can see myself, but it's a different... It's not what's in the camera. And for a second, I forgot about how bad this podcast has looked for 90 weeks in a row. And then I saw it again and I got upset. I was like, is that what it looks like? No, that's horrible. It's so blue. Why is it so blue? So, uh, is it blue there too? Well, I guess we'll see. Um, so welcome to the Halloween episode. I hope you have a wonderful ho holiday today. This is my favorite holiday. I know that I'm celebrating it by staying home alone and feeling sorry for myself because I'm not booked tonight. Now, if you're not a comedian and you're capable of having fun while you're not working, please enjoy yourself. If you are going trick or treating with your kids, I hope they get so much candy, but at very few houses, if you know what I'm saying. I don't even know what I'm saying. <sighs> Stop being a dog. I'm teasing you. It's okay to cough. God bless you. She's so disruptive this episode. Can you guys hear that? She sneezed right by the camera. I'll have it, I'll have it in multiple microphones. Yeah, come come closer to sneeze. You insane dog. Um <sighs> What is going on with her? What are we, where are we at even? Just eight minutes? Can this be over? Oh my God, make it end. You know, I don't, you know, you don't have to do the podcast, but I do. That's what I'm saying. But I hope that if you're going trick-or-treating, you have a great time. And that if you are the trick-or-treater, if you're young enough to be still doing that, there's no, what are you, what? Welcome. You're so welcome to be at this channel. Talk to your parents about it, though. Don't, I wouldn't say, I mean, I'm. please follow, like, and subscribe. Gets, make sure they okay it. Um, whatever you're doing tonight, be safe. I don't care. You know, don't be gross. That's more what I care about. I don't really care if you stay safe. Women, don't be, don't be, you know, how you guys get. Men, don't be, oh, you know, that's what I really care about. I care about uh, moral fortitude. I care about traditionalist values. Stay safe, you know, get traditionalist values, old school. Hey, this is a Christian country. You should be getting drunk and driving. I don't care about you staying safe, but don't be scummy out there, everybody. Oh, you know how you are on Halloween night. Ooh, you get, you get. Hot. The devil's flames can't hold nothing to you. Because you're too hot. So when they try to hold something to you, they're like, ouch, I'm a flame, but that burnt me. Have a blast. I'll, you know, I'll be fine. <laughs> hey, just let the internet know. I'll be fine. Um, no, really do have fun. Um, I don't know. I've not ever been an adult to enjoy Halloween with other adults. Does that make sense? Like, I'll watch movies with friends or whatever. Go see a movie, have people come over, maybe go to, like, a comics thing or whatever. Um, I had a... Hey, the year right before I moved to New York, great year. I, like, danced with a girl. I'm not the kind of guy who's like, yeah, look at me. I'm confident around you types. But I went up to her... Uh, she was dancing. I was heartbroken from a recent breakup and I think I was just like, nothing matters. Uh, and so I went up and started dancing with her. 
uh, and that quickly fizzled. I mean, the dance was great. It got her number. We went out on one date. The date was horrible. She needed lots of alcohol to like me. Uh, I needed to be, I guess, more heartbroken than I was on that first date to be into her. And uh, we left awkwardly. No. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Oh, uh, to be young. I made some choices. Anyways, so, uh, you know, it's... It's a weird holiday if you were somebody that didn't drink. And I didn't drink. Why? Because I did all the drinking. I did, you know, I did so much drinking and I did so many drugs and, and problem drugs too. You know, not just, not, not just the fun ones that everybody's doing tonight, but problem ones. And uh, so, you know, come seasonally, I would be like, oh, I'm going to AA now. <clears throat> you know, and I would be like, oh, everybody's having fun drinking and drugging. Well, not me. I'm completely straight edge. And then they would be like, woo, holiday's over, time for Christmas, let's you know, get our shit together and be ready for family stuff. And I'm like, I'm gonna go do heroin in the middle of a city with a bunch of people who are 40 years older than me. Hi, I'm Max, I'm 15. And uh, so I like, I would do drugs in a non, in an antisocial way. Uh, and I would be, and then I would be sober in an antisocial way. So Halloween has never been like a let's go out to the bars and get drunk. And if it's just bars plus costumes, that sounds pretty fun. That does sound pretty fun. Sounds like there'd be, I wish that there were, end of, I wish that there were tables for one that only one person could fit at and that I could uh, just sit out and watch. That's, what I mean. that's, my, that's my version of socializing, being alone. Okay, here's how I like to hang out with friends. Being by myself and uh, watching, watching you watch him. Oh, what is left to learn? Hi, bub. But you have fun. This is my costume. <laughs> I'm dressed as a, a as an incel. Um, I know you couldn't tell because I'm so handsome, and uh, that's what my mom keeps saying. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. Oh, by nothing anymore. Everything is just the same every day. Uh, I told you about Philly last week. Philly was cool. Shows since then, I've only had one. Right? I only had one. Yeah. Uh, it was it was good. Everything's normal. I'm working on jokes. I'm trying new ways to write jokes. What do I mean by that? You guys know I normally will just go up with an idea and be like, hi, none of this is funny. What do you think? And they're like, <laughs> I agree. It's not good. And I'll be like, thank you. Good night. Now that's writing. That's normally how I do it. Hi. Here's 47 punchlines. Do you like any of them? No. <laughs> See you again <sighs> tomorrow night. You know, it's basically that. Um, and so I'm still doing that because I can't help it because I can't shut myself up on stage. I might plan to say this, but I always say this. So I'm I'm taking that. Why am it taking me forever to say I'm writing things down? That's literally all I'm trying to say is now I'm putting, I'm just because, because there's this amazing thing that's happened to me every time that I increase the amount of effort I'm putting in, in any direction, whatever, to whatever thing I'm talking about, where I think I'm not going to have time and energy to do more work. And so I put off doing more work. And then I start doing more work and I find that, oh my God, I've got this vast giant pool of energy that I can be pulling from to do, to do more of what I want to do or, um, whatever I'm passionate about. Okay. What I, you know, and I'm this in this instance, stand up, podcasting, internet stuff, trying to be funny, trying to entertain. And, um, that's happened again, basically, you know, uh, Four or five months ago, I was not doing anything other than uploading the podcast once a month. Once a month? What? No, once a week. And I felt for a long time like that was enough. And it was nowhere near enough. 
so with some help from a friend, um, I started doing a lot more. I started, well, you know, why am I saying, well, I started doing a lot more. I started uploading a clip on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And by a clip, I just mean a stand up clip or a funny sketch or, um, you know, short, easy stuff I can make by myself or, um, something for the podcast maybe or uh you know yeah stuff like that me dancing uh, there's one where i'm eating um clam chowder in uh, my uh, closet normal funny stuff that funny guys do and um i don't want to hear anything else about it so Then the podcast, still. This podcast, the All Moments podcast, the All Moments Eternally Nice podcast, the night podcast with a short name up front and a long name in the back. Um, and more stuff, you know, like uh, some weeks, nothing else. Some weeks, three more little dumb things I'll throw on probably just TikTok. The other clips are going on Instagram and, t- and TikTok at Comedian Mexadad. Um, but feeling like, uh, that was a lot for a while and also doing sketches with a buddy on the side, not really heavily, but doing, doing some, some work there. Uh, also trying to produce a show here and then, you know, performing and stuff. I guess I'm not including this. I'm just talking about what I'm putting on the internet. Um, you know, having multiple shows a week and stuff does play in too, especially if I'm traveling, but and now I've gotten to this point where I, I feel like oh, I can do more again. As much as I know that that is and my energy isn't great, I still feel like I have room to do more. And I think that more looks like um, I'm not, you know, struggling again to remember why I started talking about this <coughs> help, but making this this podcast better. Uh, it's been going on too long to continue looking how it looked. And it's not, this, this is, may or may not be exactly how it stays. I mean, this is literally my first recorded attempt. You know, I fiddled with it on camera just to test out the camera more than anything yesterday. Um, but it just, this feels like um, a step in the right direction though. Def- certainly the, just the camera quality by itself, I'm hoping is a big improvement. We'll have to see it when I pull my computer screen closer to me, my baby, come back. And, um... I uh, can get into editing. We'll see what it what it looks like. I mean, if it's 20% better, will I be happy? Yes, but I'm not thrilled. <laughs> but I, I think it's better than that, especially the colors. The color balance seems to be better. And I'll learn how to use the camera better. So this is probably not how the, the camera is going to be permanently either, you know? So I expect more changes if you're somebody that listens every week. If you're somebody that doesn't listen every week and you're still with me, that you are a statistical anomaly, but I appreciate you. Um, that I actually appreciate you more because you're a statistical anomaly and not because you are um, rare, but because you are uh, making me sound smart by talking about you. Uh, thank you for that. Anybody that helps me be somebody is my everybody. Make a t-shirt. Ooh, anybody that's my... Anybody that helps me be a somebody is my everybody. That's, hi, I'm a codependent trying to make it. Um, so, yeah, comedy has been weird because I've been writing. Oh, there we go. Bettering this podcast, writing. I'm doing more work. Hey, I know what I'm doing here. I've been doing it for almost 100 weeks in a row. I can do it. Um, so that's where kind of the writing is coming from is there's so much time, (laughs) there's so much time yet. I feel that I have none, but I feel better when I'm working on stuff. And so as opposed to sitting and reading and watching and whatever, and hoping an idea pops in and then it does, I've decided that first of all, I can take ideas that have popped in and just learn more about them by, by seeing how I feel about them on a piece of paper. Uh, but also just feeling like it probably won't make me worse you know 
Um, if I was to sit here and recite a joke over and over and again, I think that would make me worse. I think there's some benefit to saying a joke a few times. I think you can take it way too far and you can become robotic. I'm pretty good at saying things organically on stage. That's, you know, making them sound like I'm, I'm saying them for the first time. But um, it, it still would be a hurdle for me if I was to sit here and be like, oh, my dad is old. He is old because he is 82 and that is old. And isn't he close to dying? <laughs> you know, just running through my really hot material like that um i don't think is helpful i don't think that's helpful as a, as a comic so i'm uh scribbling and i'm actually drawing again don't talk about stuff too much sometimes guys talk about stuff too much you actually lose the motivation to do this stuff because talking about the stuff gives you a dopamine hit too and then you just want to spend all your time talking about doing the stuff instead of doing the stuff you know the people that are like writing the book that's the classic example the person who's always talking about what they're going to do instead of doing it um i have been that person certainly but more for lack of ability i think than lack of drive i guess is what i'm hoping i don't know the answer to that question so it's I haven't taken every stuff that I've worked on yet here though. Like it's new enough that I haven't even taken any of it to stage. You know, I've got stuff that's been written that I've taken this. I'm not saying I've never, I'm saying like this more, more recent stuff. And I'm excited about some of the stuff that I came up with. Um, I do find though, that when I'm sitting and writing, that it is really easy to approach a topic from one angle like I sit down thinking about it a certain way whatever the premise is and that's the way the joke goes you know as opposed to on stage and my dog's gonna want out in a second this is an annoying podcast you're being annoying right now Nale. um on stage, it's very easy for me to go from like A to G. And I think even then my brother actually said he thinks I would do better to uh, give the audience more to hold on to, to cut like more connecting thoughts. Um, and he knows, I mean, he's a computer engineer, so he knows what's funny. Um, and uh, I... I don't think that that is so much of a hurdle that it can't, I'm using the word hurdle a lot today, apparently. Hurdle? I don't think it's so much of a problem that I can't do this. I just am saying like, it's interesting. It does, I've said this before, it does sometimes come out as like a writer. And by a writer, I'm gonna say Mark Norman, and that sounds like I'm calling Mark Norman just a writer and not a good comic, and I'm not. I just mean like, his voice to me is the voice when I think like, here, insert premise, receive punchline, like com computational computer comic brain voice. That's who I think of. And so when I'm sitting to write, sometimes my jokes, I feel like I'm writing for him or something, you know? Um, and I know that it's not how I speak on stage. That is a big enough problem that some of that stuff, at least as is, can't be used on stage for me. And then I do see, you know, uh, you know, this is, uh, there are writing jobs. There are things that people have done. Louis C.K. had writing jobs on Conan, uh, on um, Dana Carvey's show, you know. Um, everybody's written on everything. <clears throat> there are opportunities like that. Locally, uh, I live in the Midwest, so there's uh, Bob and Tom Radio, which... I don't want to speak publicly about, <laughs> but uh, I think um, I'm 
poor sip timing. A lot of dead air. My fault, everybody. Please don't be mad. If you're mad, leave a comment. Let me know that you're mad. While you're mad, send me your, let me your address there so I can send you an apology. Um, I, do, I don't think... Um, I, don't, I don't think that I like any setting where I'm sitting down all day. So thinking about being on like SNL and stuff and, and knowing how much work those people put in those people what does that mean those people how dare you get out I kick myself out of my own house I'll sleep outside tonight for you me um, they uh, they spend a lot of time in an office and you know if you're working on like uh, the John Stewart show I it you know for I think if I got to work with John Stewart that would be like a dream come true. So that I would do. So maybe that's just the difference. Maybe I just answered my own question. In life, that's typically how I have chosen my behaviors. Not by, here's a hundred of them and which seems best, but like, which am I called to like emotionally? Like, oh, that's, yeah, you know? And then you kind of can't stop me. So that maybe makes sense. Um, for someone, you know, because the point is there's a lot of comics like me who don't do well sitting and working, you know? So to think of whole hosts of them to create great shows, um, you're calling SNL great? Well, you know, don't put words in my mouth, but um, John Stewart for sure. But you know, like, you know, the, they're passionate about what they're doing, so it's easy for them. You know, maybe even if they are wired like me, they can put in the work because they're feeling so strongly about what they're doing. So maybe that's what I would need in, the, in that situation, but I do just think that there are people probably who are lucky to sit down. I bet people that are talking about comics, by the way, right now, but there are comics that I bet are more studious. They're, they're able to sit and work better. And when they write, it comes out more like how they speak. Um, like that's their, that's their strength, you know? Um, I could say I know for sure that there are people like that, but I'm assuming, I know that there are people that write like that, but I can't, I'm not in their brains and their bodies. I don't know exactly what they feel like, but that's my guess is why some people are drawn to that. Cause for me, when I do it, it feels gross and icky and like, I don't even want to, I don't want to be here and let me stand up. And I do one joke and I'm like, that's good. That's good. That's good. And, oh, and I have to go away from it. Um, which is sort of, I'm like repellent to things that are good for me also. So whether, you know, stuff like I'm eating, uh, if I, you know, eating, what am I saying? Healthy eating, exercise, consistent exercise, uh, good work habits, you know, um, putting myself out there dating, um, make, making sure I'm hanging out with friends, stuff that's good for me, I'm repellent to. So it is possible that what I'm doing I keep pointing over here. That's my office is in that direction. Wait, this is not your office? No, this is just where I record. I have a whole different normal human room that I go to, not one with skeletons and purple lights that I where I work on uh, stuff. And also the skeleton, I think, is probably just going to stay, by the way. I, I know it's like Halloween and I'm introducing it and I'm wearing a Halloween shirt and the, the orange shirt here and the skeleton and the witch. The witch is out of here. You're out of here, bitch. But the, the skeleton, and it is a sexist thing. It's a male-female thing. The skeleton I just like. Not that I don't like the witch. I do like you. Liked you a lot last night. Man. <laughs> what up? I fucked that little wig. Um... Yeah, and I'm just not one of them. So, I think that... It's absolutely, I can get jokes from that process. I definitely can get jokes from that process, but I can't stand working like that um, is what I'm learning, I think. We'll see. Again, though, I, I really haven't had a good opportunity to take them to stage, so they could just not be funny at all. Um, we're talking a lot. I'm talking a lot about joke writing, I guess. The, the first way I ever wrote jokes when I started doing stand up when I was 18 or 19, whatever I was. The way that I wrote jokes 
first, I believe I just wrote them. It bombed with that material. Second time around, I spoke, definitely. I went to Best Buy and got an audio recorder. This is how, I guess my phone didn't have one. I, I mean, I lived before phones existed. I mean, not phones, but you know what I'm saying? Like, so I just don't, I, 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 it's, I'm saying it like that because it's possible I was just so dumb because I had a little like emergency cell phone at that point in my life. No, I was 18, 19, I had a real cell phone. So I probably had an audio recorder and I just didn't know it is what I'm saying. I'm just dumb. But I went to Best Buy and got like, I think it did, it does feel good like to have your notebook. This is my joke notebook. Probably felt good to have, this is my joke recorder, <laughs> you know, like a little, it looked like a little, like a little clip vibrator, Bzz, like a bullet. Um, but for my funny thoughts, it makes my funny thoughts orgasm. What are we talking about? So uh, I would talk into it and then um, like I'd have a premise and I'd talk about it and then I would write down what made me laugh or what I liked that I would come up with. I probably, I was probably liked everything that I came up with because I was so like, I'm the best. Um, and I had some success with that. And then I got away from it and I don't know why. I know that I started being a lot more loose on stage because I was getting results from that that I wasn't getting from my jokes. That's probably the main reason. Uh, and then the other reasons, what I just said is that working is hard. Um, but... It's, it's, it's whatever, man. You got to do what you got to do to get as fun as you can get doing this stuff. Um, I'll bring it up again, watching Ran, Barnaclo and Blake Hammond do their, their group, their podcast, Ran So Far with Blake, uh, their co-headlining show that they do. They both get up and do an hour at the same time. They're not doing... <laughs> He's Rand's doing his act, Blake's doing his act. It's not like that. I mean, they're like talking, they're interacting. It's very much like a wild card and straight man, you know, like the classic duos, Smothers Brothers kind of thing. And, but it's so sharp that I think that inspired me also just to be like, hey, dude, like, whatever feels like it's in your way to working more get rid of it because <laughs> when you're 65 and you're 70 percent as funny as you could have been you're not going to be like oh yeah well i'm glad i stuck to my guns on that i know myself that way at least my dog wants out so pause man i really hope this camera works out you know <laughs> This is, you know, I, I've not, I've recorded for an hour on it, but I've not edited it. So, edit it, edit it, it, edit it, edit it, edit it, edit it, edit it, edit it. For people that are not English speakers uh, natively, this sucks. Edit, e d i t, e d. So past tense. Edited it, i t, edited it. <laughs> no wonder our language is hard to learn edited it what did you just say to me edited it have you had a chance to edit it um uh, uh are you now what are you referring to edit and you edited it you edited it you edited it yet you edited it yet you edited it yet you edited it yet that's english dude yeah edited it yet you edited it yet you edited it yet Get it it yet? <laughs> My god, that's what I'm I'm done. Get it it yet. <sighs> it's it's a struggle, man. It it is tough. The uh, the like I'm being so serious. This is I'm sorry, I'm used to looking at this still. I'm being too serious. <laughs> I've always had this issue. And by too serious, I mean I'm being too serious about being funny. I ruin comedy for myself by being so serious about it. Um, I've mentioned it before. I like this is like this quote I was so proud of when I was younger. And like maybe I still am proud of it because I'm still bringing it up. When did being funny 
become so serious is a note, little note I would leave for myself. Because, you know, in high school and stuff, it was just survival mechanism, pretty fucking serious. But it didn't feel serious because it felt just, it was only spontaneous. I wasn't writing funny stuff on purpose, you know? That would be fucking wacky. Going into 10th grade, like, oh, I'll show Billy. Yeah, I've got this perfect roast for Billy. I'm going to bring this. I stayed up all night. No one's going to know that I'm not normal now. He 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 he. So, you know, it feels spontaneous because it is. And uh, then you start doing comedy and it becomes intentional. Well, I just said I don't like to work. Like, I don't like... I only like to follow, like I said, how I feel. I want to go do the thing I want to do. But if I don't want to do the thing, then I'm probably not going to do the thing, you know? And so, now funny is becoming that it's hard to admit maybe it is become that fully but it's it's becoming that where there are times when i have to go do it and i'm not feeling funny and i'm not feeling like i want to be funny um and that that is a challenge for sure that's a challenge and it's because i make it this thing i don't need to make it i like i i do need to be writing jokes that is my job to do to have an act that's strong enough to get me work that pays bills. Um, I don't make very much from comedy, but I make some. You know, <laughs> it's it's it is it is an amount of money, um, and a lot of it's in you know cash and tiny Venmo deposits and um, you know. $20 at a time over three weeks because comics are weird and broke and <laughs> booking shows that they can't pay the comics. And, um, but, you know, it's more than I've ever made from it by, by a pretty big margin. And I suspect that that will continue to grow. I'm not, I'm not too worried about it growing. I'm, I'm worried about it growing slowly, too slowly. Um, I don't want to talk about it. Um, realest place on the internet. Gayest catchphrase on the internet. Realest place on the internet. Uh, oh, the Tony Hinchcliffe thing. Did you guys see the Tony Hinchcliffe thing? That was pretty silly. Um, <laughs> hey, remind me to put an intro thing for people that have clicked on this video only for this part to let them know that it's at 40 minutes in. Um, I guess I should talk about that because everybody's talking about it. I might as well chime in, right? Because I'm important and I matter and everybody has an opinion and everybody needs to share how they feel about everything. And because I'm a comic, it means I have to talk about it. I don't. I could choose to not talk about it, but I might as well because we've got a, a, you know, a few more minutes to fill here. So, um, I'm not personally a huge fan of Hinchcliffe because I don't think he's as good as Rickles. I'm not sure I buy that he's a Rickles, but I do think he's a good comedian, like he is a traveling headlining comedian and, and was. You know, even before Kill Tony got as big as it has gotten. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> I would like to, I, I would offer him, the, you know, Jon Stewart offered him a lot of credit, I think, a lot of grace. And I think that's good. Like, as far as the, him being offensive about, here, let's, let's break it up like this. As far as him being offensive about Puerto Rico or not, what he said was absolutely clearly a joke. And I have not seen the whole set, but I've seen minutes after that joke, and he starts to do better. And so what he was doing was working, it's seemingly, all right, for the room. And uh, that's a comic's job, by the way, to work in the room that you're in. And um, I... Uh, would agree with definitely with Stuart here where he says 
that um, that's so obviously a joke that there's a floating island of garbage in the ocean. I think it's called Puerto Rico is such a formulaic setup punch. Like it, you couldn't give a better example of what's a setup and a punch. That's a joke. Um, now, I'm not saying <laughs> that joking excuses everything necessarily. I'm a comic, so I am saying trying a joke is certainly okay, no matter kind of what the joke is, uh, as long as you are, hear the response and work with whatever, whatever that response you get is. But um, I am saying that like, uh, well, context matters. Let's try not to have too much dead air here. <laughs> context does matter. Um, I'm not, and I'm not, again, like as far as being offensive, I don't think he was offensive at all. That's what I'm saying about that. It's, it is clearly a joke and the joke is such a joke that it shouldn't offend you. I don't think if you are not looking to be offended, I don't think that that's particularly offensive. I'm not Puerto Rican, but if he said, um, there is a, uh, strip of land in the desert that everybody calls the taint, it's Palestine, it's got the Gaza strip, you know, I, I wouldn't care. I would feel like the timing was a little mean because of what's happening in Gaza right now. I would be like, well, that's, that's like being, God, why do the Jews have such skinny bodies during the Holocaust, you know? So it would be a little mean, but um, I would be like not offended by it though, you know? And his joke was a lot cleaner than the one that I just said. So no, I wouldn't, I don't think it's offensive. I think that's, BS from the left, to be honest. And I'm I'm closer to the left than I've been in a while. Um, you know, I, like I was feeling like, God, I can't relate to them at all. And now I'm feeling like I can in a lot more ways than I, I was just a year or two ago. But I think that's BS from the left. I think they're looking for a talking point. Um, now, as far as... Him choosing to go, Tony choosing to go in support of Trump openly, do stand up. I will say that I have seen Steven Crowder. I've seen a handful of, of guys. I don't think any women. I'm sure that I, we could find some. But guys that um, were trying to be comics and they became right wing spokespeople and they 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 definitely didn't get any funnier from that point on i would argue that most of them became pretty obscure and seemingly a little lost um or at least delusional in their own world and so but none of them are as successful or were as successful as tony is currently um, and I don't think one rally is a career move. It's just a booking. You're just doing a show. So you can support whoever you want as president. Um, personally, I think it's uncouth. Why? Because it's just, um, Well, how would I feel if, if, well, I'd say I'm not a Kamala supporter either, but I guess I just really don't like Trump. So I'm like, well, I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm not too entangled in this personally, but I think, um, if he was in support of Kamala, I would just be really surprised <laughs> if Tony Hinchcliffe was a huge Kamala supporter. <laughs> that, that lesbian is so... I want to have sex with her. I can't. Am I doing a Tony Hinchcliffe even? I can't even look at the camera when I was doing that because I was so embarrassed about how bad it felt. Um, I don't like when anybody really, any comic takes a side really. Like Janine Garofalo, if she's super left, right? That has always made me feel like I'm being spoken to about something. Even if she detaches herself from that entirely and, and I'm not a huge I don't know her work super intimately so maybe that was a bad poll but um, I, I'm typically not a fan so I think I, I guess I would hope I wouldn't like it no matter who he out or like outwardly supported 
Um, I would be happy for him, I think, if he had, like, really killed and gotten, like, success from it. I would just be happy for him. Uh, <laughs> as it, just, like, comic to comic, I know that I would, I want work and he's, but now if you're, like, if you're one of those people that feels like Trump is here to destroy the country, then you're like, well, how, how dare anybody be sucking the teat? If you think Trump is Hitler, yeah, I guess Tony is like irreversibly evil to you. No. I just can't put myself in that position. I don't I just don't feel that way about Tony and Trump, really. I don't like Trump at all. I think he's a horrible guy. Very selfish and broken. But I'm you know, speaking from a place of privilege as a white man, not feeling uh, horribly threatened um i feel threatened by the whole thing dude i feel threatened by i mean like left right none of it looks good to me so i'm i'm just like <laughs> the whole thing feels like this huge massive overwhelming dumb thing that i have to contend with that i don't feel represented by in any way so that's part of it too so hear me there you know i'm saying like oh, it's not a big deal but i'm also probably more detached than your average person from the whole concept so um know that i suppose but if you're looking for a way to feel about tony from a comic i would say he's he's it well let me say this too i don't fully buy this oh i'm just taking a gig and doing what a comic does thing a little bit because if I if I got booked to do a show in front of a bunch of people who I didn't agree with on a moral issue I wouldn't pander to them on that issue so I think when you as personally when I go into a room that I know is is feeling a certain way like I've played biker uh, bars and things like that um, I've played, uh, I've definitely played some scary places. Um, more, I would actually say in New York less than being in the Midwest. I've played worse places in the Midwest than I have when I was living in a bigger city. I definitely didn't go in looking for negative things to say about groups of people so that those bikers would like me. So there... I, I, yeah, man, he deserves an out. I don't think one, any, I don't think this is, you know, this is what Tony does, quote unquote. That's what we say. So I started this by saying, I don't buy the Don Rickles thing. So that's part of the issue too. We're saying this is what he does. He's an insult comic. Okay. I just personally, to me, I feel like Tony feels like he's an insult comic because his other skills leave you wanting. And I'm not even trying to like be, he's a better comic than I am. I'm not even trying to be like particularly uh, divisive here. I just think he, uh, I, I think he's done a lot of roasts and stuff. And I think he's insults people a lot because the format of his show. But I think if his show was a compliment show, that's the type of comic that he'd be. Um, that's more so how I feel about it. I just don't fully buy the he's the new Don Rickles thing that we're going with here. Anyways, guys, my audio cut out at the end there, but no big deal. Uh, you didn't miss much. I was finished anyway. So happy holidays. Enjoy yourselves. Take care of yourselves. And I will talk to you next week. Bye. I just don't fully buy the he's the new Don Rickles thing that we're going with here. Anyways, guys, my audio cut out at the end there, but no big deal. Uh, you didn't miss much. I was finished anyway. So. Happy holidays. Enjoy yourselves. Take care of yourselves. And I will talk to you next week. Bye.